morning everybody Pinchy Al here and we are doing a big project today as you can see from here we are doing tie rods inner and outer boots ball joints new hardware uh, control arm bushings and the dog bone bushings now these are the ECS tuning bushing kit uh, or the hop limiter kit was what they call it so we're going to be doing all this today I'm going to show you how to do this this is a pretty quick job as long as you have a press you'll save your life so much time you don't understand um, so let's get to work because this is in Chow's garage here's a cool trick that you guys might have never known but you don't need a ball joint um, separator to separate the ball joint from the control arm. All you need to do is literally break loose the nut until it hits the axle. And then keep breaking it loose. And you'll see right here it's separated already from the uh, spindle. This is a cool trick I learned on accident. Um, working on my friend's car and we were like, hey, let's just try this out, see if it worked. And it worked. It literally separated, um, pressed itself out from the... Uh, from its uh, socket here. Uh, once you do that, now you can take off the 313s on the bottom. This is an 18 millimeter. Same goes right here. This is an 18 millimeter. You're going to need to have an 18 millimeter wrench on top to hold it to break this loose. Uh, right here goes the same for this part of the control arm. There's an 18 in here. Um, there's a welded in nut in place. Hopefully, it's still welded in place so we can remove this one as well. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this, I'm trying to, um, right here, there's the first 18 right here, I have to use the breaker bar to break it loose, you're going to cram your 18 wrench on top, oh man, you guys can't see that, but just try to get the nut that's right there, on top, you'll feel it, it spins, because it's, um, it's just a nut that sits up there. Break it loose. Once it comes off, if it comes off nicely, you shouldn't have that much of a problem yanking it out. Uh, make sure you keep the nut, the nut, and the bolt together. So that's for that part of the control arm. We've already taken the three, The three uh, 13 millimeters that sits underneath the ball joint. The ball joint's already been broken loose. So you just gotta keep pushing down, breaking the loose nut, push down, break the loose nut, and then eventually it'll pop right out just like that. Now you'll see here this is in the way. So we can't take the control arm 100% out until we take the tie rod in out, and that's a 19 millimeter. Um, double check that but it should be a 19 yep if it's friendly enough it'll pop the nut will come right off some of these uh, nuts aren't very friendly and they're probably seized on um, you're gonna need a allen bit or a, or a torx bit to hold it in place depending on what brand of uh, um, tie rod end you got. Mine has an Allen bit. Now, to take off the tie rod end completely off, you are going to need to remove the control arm so you can get access to the actual um, uh, the back of the tie rod. Um, the, the, if you had the tool for it, there's a tie rod puller tool or axle tool I guess you want to call it I forgot what it's called exactly um, and it gives you easy access it's a wrench yeah it's a tie rod wrench and it gives you access to it so you can break it loose so um, once you have the new the, the nut all the way off put it back on about halfway um, right here and smack the crap out of it with a hammer so you can pop this out. Since we're getting new ones, I can care less what damage we do to these. Um, I'm not going to reuse these anymore. 
so there's one last nut that we need and it's the 18 millimeter that sits over here on the other side of the um, uh, control arm Find the right angle for this. So I can break it loose. Just break it loose. Make sure you got your 18 with you. Come out pretty nicely. Now I recommend trying to unthread it by hand and listen for that nut. If that nut didn't fall off in the inside, it's welded in there because these there's a nut inside here that is welded inside there that have a tendency of breaking off. And if they do, oh man, you're in for a lot of fun after that. Um, if it does ever happen to you, there's this hole right here <coughs> underneath the control arm. If I can get you guys to see that. Yeah, right here. You need to get a drill bit, a large drill bit, and make that hole larger so your pinky can fit in there. Nice and like loose and like. If that ever does happen, you have to drill that hole go in there you can fandangle the uh, nut and hold it in place while you get the bolt back in and then once you get it tight enough use an impact gun to tighten it down I've done that probably about 10 or 12 times on other people's cars it is a headache and a half just FYI and then over here there's that 18 millimeter I was talking about and then you'll see here that I took the ball joint out without even removing the axle now we just gotta take the tie rod take it out and then the swing the um, the control arm out and they'll come right out now this is part of the video where you need to turn the volume down it's gonna get loud you're gonna bang this right here huh. first time I ever had to take one of these off with two hits not too shabby. Now, one thing you want to make sure is not to adjust the tie rod nut on here, okay? Leave that alone because we're going to use that to give us a um, kind of a, an idea where we got to um, mark our other tie rods. Now, what I'm doing here does not mean your car will be aligned and you don't have to take it to an alignment shop. Oh uh, hell no. So telling you guys now, you're doing this so you can get your car to the alignment shop after you do this job. If you guys come on YouTube and say, oh my car's messed up, my car won't drive like crap because you know the tie rod ends are messed up. Well that's your fault. I pre-warned you. Listen to the watch and listen to the video. Don't spin through it, don't go too quickly through it. That's your guys' fault. You see how I did that? Boy John just came right off. These are actually not still too not too bad, but I'm not gonna use them. So now we have free access to the control arms. And all you have to do is like I said is wiggle the crap out of them until they pop out. That, everybody, is how you take a control arm out. Now we're going to clean them, and we're going to press the old ball joint, I mean control arm here, and here. Now, this control arm bushing very, very rarely gets uh, used, and gets very minimal use out of its uh, life. Um, these really don't go bad very often, or at all. Oh, excuse me. 
Make it the choice if you want to press it out or not. I would, I am going to press mine out, but you guys don't have to. This one, on the other hand, I mean, I can turn it by hand. That's how bad it is. So you can see there's a rip there, a rip there, and there. Oh, and there. So every corner has a rip on it. These are due, and we went to a solid polyurethane one, so these are going to be nice. Big upgrade. So now with those out of the way, back here, um, you're going to need some wire cutters and take out the uh, clips on both sides for the, uh, the boot so you can slide that back and it gives you access to the, uh, the inner tie rod bolt to get this sucker out. I know it's a little hard to see, so I'm going to try to get you guys up close. You see that right there? That's the nut that you need to remove. Turn it counterclockwise or lefty loosey. Um, if you don't have the special tool for it, I recommend getting uh, vice grips and just grab it and break it in loose. They don't go on really tight, so they should come right off. If all else fails, go to your local hardware store and rent the tool for it. I know it's hard to see, but I broke it loose with my vice grips. I mean, it literally took two little taps and it broke right loose. I said before, these don't go on very tight. Once they're loose, they come off right by hand really easily. And there's that. So this is the driver side one and make note that I have not adjusted the nut yet because we're going to match them up as best we can with the ones we just got. And the whole reason for this is to get you to where you need to go when you finish the job to get these done. To get the alignment done. I emphasize that a lot. So this is going to look a little hard to see but bear with me okay. I went to AutoZone, picked up a 1716 socket. Make sure it's a short one. And use a 13 millimeter short socket, as short as you can find. The reason why for this size is on the control arm, you need it to fit around the hole, around the bushing itself. So when you're squeezing it here with the vise, you'll get something to push into. Little socket on the end will actually just press it in, push all the way in until it pops until you can't go any further, and then just wiggle the rest of it out. It pops right out. Not very difficult to do. You see right here, that's the bushing. Uh, pretty much to put it back in, reverse the process, not very difficult. Yet you don't even need the uh, socket, you just need the press and that and just squish it in. Um, I'll show you how to do that in just a minute, but. That is pretty much it. It's the balancing act. You have to get all three parts in here. I'll show you how it looks, but like that. And you gotta balance the three and try to crank the <coughs> device to get it nice and tight. Once you get it tight on there, then you can just do it over and over until you press it out. It gets on there pretty hard, so you gotta bang it with the hammer sometimes. But it shouldn't take you very long to do it. It took me about 10 minutes. That's that side. Now we're going to do the control arm itself. I mean the secondary bushing of the control arm next. Um, I need a bigger socket. Let's get to work. So on ECS tuning, here is the uh, part number. Uh, MK4CABKASM. The polyurethane uh, control arm bushing kit. Okay, we give you everything you need to press it in. The uh, control arm small bushing. Make sure you pull all the uh, metal inserts out. You're not going to need them immediately. You're going to need them after you install them. It 
give you some uh, polyurethane uh, grease here. You use that to do during the install. Makes the install a lot easier. Okay, so on your control arm, uh, you'll see there's a flat side and then there's a round side. The round side is actually the way you install the bushing. Um, and then on the bushing itself, you'll see there's a curved side and kind of a textured side. You want to do the smooth side first, and that goes in. So what we do... Uh, grab a little bit of the grease. And slap it around the ring. Just like that. Get some on the inside. And then just put some on the top surface of the actual bushing here. Um, just whatever's left over. Don't need to put anything in here because we're we, uh, grease up the inside of the control arm that'll be enough it's up to you guys if you want to not required get yourself a little handy dandy towel clean your hands off now using you know, one of your um, little tools here that you rented you're going to center it as best you can all around. Once you have done that, try to make sure it's as flat as possible and as center as possible. What's going to happen, it's going to want to slide around. Pay attention here, you'll see it's going a little sideways. It's okay. It'll, it'll do that. But then it'll eventually it'll just pop itself in. But don't go quick, okay guys? Make sure it evens out by on its own. Once you get to the bottom, back out on it. As you'll see, I can't go any further with the bushing. So, once you do that, move your plates back. And give yourself the space that you need to, to get the arm as straight as possible. Finish it off. And I go slow. And while doing that, pay attention on the bushing itself. That should be it. Back out on it. You'll notice it's pressed both on both sides. Um, you'll have a little gap. Once you get it in the actual car, it'll even itself out. Next thing to do is to press in the, uh, the metal insert. Not very difficult. There 
you go. That's that bushing. Uh, clean off any access uh, grease around the uh, control arm. And then that's that control, that bushing is done. Now we gotta do the other one. And this one's a little bit more tedious. Because it's uh, harder, much harder to do. Very tight fit for this one. Now for the control arm bushing, for the small one, you see here, there's a big side and a small side. Okay? On here, when you put this in, you want the big side pretty much to go this way. You can go this way if you want to. It doesn't really affect it very much, so it's really up to you in which way you want to do it. But you have to install it, uh, the small side first, because it's the smallest part and it's the easiest part to press in. Um, same process, grease up the inside. Um, if you don't grease these up, they will squeak. Just a heads up on you guys. These uh, polyethylene bushings squeak in general. So if they're not greased or lubed up, they're always going to squeak. So I don't like a squeaky car. Right now my car doesn't squeak, thank goodness. I want to keep it that way. Now this becomes really tricky, so you'll see right here how I have it, so you want to install it like that. Now what's going to happen, the bushing will collapse and bend and it won't go in straight or it won't go in at all. So what you need to do, man this vice is so old. I'll show you how it looks when it when it fails, so you guys can see. I'm gonna go grab a. Oh, I got them right here. So what you want to do is set of vice grips right here in the middle. You want to keep squeeze them a little bit, keep them from collapsing. Um, this will keep the pressure more even, but I'm going to make them fail so you guys can see it. My hammer. It's going to be a little noisy. Bear with me. And you'll see how it just bent. Bent out of there, just like that. So, the solution, number one, would be a better press, but I don't, I mean vice, but I don't have the money for that, so I work with what I got. Grab my vice grips. Put my vice grips on there. I'm gonna give it a little squeeze. And while squeezing it. Paying attention which direction the 
you're pushing is bending towards because if it wants to bend this way you're gonna have to turn the control arm this way um, to get that to, to press back in itself so Keep repeating the process until you press it in. You'll get it. So, you can see here I got a new vise because the other one was just crap. So I did the uh, the one and seven sixteenth Duralast socket, as short as possible, and a thirteen millimeter short um, socket down below, and just literally just squeeze it in. You got all the way through the bottom one should come out the little one should fall right out here's the big one there's your bushing and then kind of fandangle it out if not just grab your vice grips Hulk them out. They're not reusable, so there we go. And that one's out. Now you were doing before, grease up the uh, the install port. Because you want to prevent them from squeaking. And you want to make your install as easy as possible. The resi was a, a, a residual. Just grease up the bushing on the small side, not the big side. Now, let me get me right here. So once you got that all going. Set up your bushing here. Try to center it in the middle as best you can. And do the best you can to keep it in the middle. Because it's going to want to slide to one direction. process that's the heart this is the part of the hardest part of your bushing install right here it's also the most annoying so but you'll get it Why don't you use the metal piece? It's because the, the the bushing won't collapse correctly to go in. I tried that many times before with the metal one. Actually, it's actually harder to do it that way. This is just more tedious. So 
it sucks. There we go. We just had a fold a little bit. And there it is. Get the metal insert. Winning all by hand, so. If you know if you've done it right, as long as all the bushing has actually seated itself and not like bent in or something like that. If not, you're going to have to push it harder so it can push out until it, the bushing actually is seated all the way. But there you guys go. That one's done. So I got half of the brain pressed out already and then I use a smaller uh, bearing thing and put it off centered so I can press out the rest of it so I'll shoot it out sideways but it's fine I don't want to damage anything the process to install the new ones but we don't need to keep them on a corner we just put them on flat and then squish them in very very easy process grease up the hole now you'll see there's a round side and then there's a flat side the round side is how you install them the flat side or non-rounded side is how you remove them that's the remove side. Same goes with the bushing. There's a smooth side and then there's a rough side. The smooth side is what you need to push down in. So, get your press. Nice and centered. as centered as you can because if not it's going to want to go sideways and stuff just like that sideways this is why you have to have it on the round side 
it won't rip the bushing it'll just slide into place once you feel a little tension you're done take this off and you'll see we're almost to the end all we need to do is press it out a little bit more You can try to hit it in. If you don't have a press, you can take it to your local shop. At least remove this one with the vise. If you have that and install that one with the vise. The other ones, I mean, you might end up taking to a shop, probably costing you about like 30 to 50 bucks for them to press them out and push in the new ones. But there you go, guys. Control arms are done. Now you got to reverse the process on your install. Look up your torque specs, install this guy. Now we're going to do tie rods. Okay. So that's going to be next. Stay tuned. So the tie rods actually are different per side. Um, so you do have to figure out what side is what. Um, so I kept my tie rods on each side, left, left them alone pretty much. So the way you're going to is going to have to do it and to make them work for you. I'll see if I can get you guys set up here correctly. My camera does not like sticking on trash cans. <laughs> oh, give me a second here, okay, guys. It's not gonna work. Come on. Well, you're going to stand them up together and pretty much make them match, not by thread, but by height. So, it's a little bit of work. I'm going to try to do this one-handed, but do the best you can to make them fit uh, side by side by height. Once you even them out, that's as much as you're going to be able to get them as accurate as possible. It's not an alignment, guys. This is just to get your car going straight so you can take it to an alignment shop and get it done okay uh, reverse the process for the install very very straightforward you need a 19 millimeter wrench and your vice grips for the bottom to remove them that's it this is a kind of a weird angle so bear with me um, so here's your tie rod um, what you're gonna need to do is make sure you, you spin it on the side where the nut is on if you spin it from here, you have a risk of uh, breaking loose the uh, your your alignment setting, which I just did. So either way, I mean, there's really no right or wrong way to put this on. So hopefully, this won't mess up my pre-alignment setting as much. Once you have it there. Don't install your um, uh, I, um, your tie rod in yet. You just need this so it doesn't spin on you. So you can get to, to tighten this part right here for the um, tie rod in here, inner tie rod portion. So back to this and grab your vice grips like I showed you before. These don't go on very tight. Just nice and tight, I guess is the, the formula here. As long as you can lock your vice grips. Once 
once that's done, put your tube back on. Now, the catch here is you need to get that little gas, uh, little ring that you got with your your kit here for the tie rod inner tie rod boot because they're a bit to put in. So hopefully you guys have fun with that. But that's your tie rod in install. Put your rings on, your clamps. I'm going to try to do them right now in just a minute. And then reverse install your control arms. Get your torque specs. Your new ball joints. I mean are, are just as easy to put in as they were to get out. So same way you took them off. Um, if you don't know what ball joint goes where, underneath them has an L and an R, left and right. If you can't figure that out, you shouldn't be working on your car. <laughs> so I got that ball joint ready, that, my new control arms are done. I'm going to get the um, clamps here and we're done with this side. Repeat the process on the driver's, on the passenger side and you're done. You are done. So, doot, 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 doot. thanks for watching again for this episode of Pinchas Garage. We just did control arms, tie rods, inner and out, and ball joints together. Voila! Yay! Give yourself a pat on the back because you did it yourself. And thanks again, everybody, for watching because this is Pinchas Garage, uh, starring Pinchal and Ray Ray. <laughs>